You're listening to the SSPX Podcast, and welcome to episode 47 of the Crisis in the Church series. Today, we're happy to have Father Michael Goldaddy, the prior of St. Vincent de Paul's Chapel in Kansas City, Missouri, join us to answer a question that is on the mind of many who are new to the traditional Catholic community. Namely, is it okay for me to attend a Mass of the Society of St. Pius X? There are many experts out there who claim one or several of the following. One, you can't fulfill your Sunday obligation at an SSPX chapel. Two, you could fulfill your obligation, but it would be sinful to do that. Yes, we've actually heard that one. Or three, it's not a sin to attend, but be careful, it promotes a schismatic mentality. So in the conclusion of the Crisis in the Church series study of the SSPX itself over the last few episodes, we will answer all those questions and let you know why it's actually good to attend an SSPX Mass right now on the SSPX Podcast. Welcome back to the SSPX Podcast, our next episode on the Crisis in the Church series, and very ha- happy to welcome for the first time to this series, and I think well, probably the first time on the podcast as well, Father Michael Goldaddy. Hello, Father. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Good. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, better late than never. Uh, we are probably, we only call, probably only have a couple episodes left, um, but, you know, there's, there's no time like the present. Um, wanted to have you on, Father, to ask and answer one basic question, and that is, can I go to an SSPX Mass? Uh, now, obviously, Father, you are an SSPX priest, um, and so you are going to be talking about this from your perspective, uh, but we're going to be try to, trying to talk about this um, with objective terms, with objective facts, um, kind of like how I mentioned when, we're, when I was talking with Father McFarland uh, last episode, this isn't just a Homer episode. We're not just going to be giving the party line, but trying to give some uh, actual facts and resources so the people who are concerned about this uh, can dive a little bit deeper. So where do we start with answering this question, Father Goldetti? Well, um, maybe why do we ask the question? Um, because there are a number of misunderstandings out there as to who we are. Uh, you've covered quite of this bit of this material in the recent podcasts, uh, which is wonderful. But just to dispel some uh, misunderstandings that that linger. I mean, I recently heard someone say, "Well, you don't pray for the Pope in the Mass. Uh, that's why I stay away." We're not set of a contest. We do pray for Pope Francis in the Mass. Uh, we pray for the local bishop. Uh, we're not uh, schismatic. Um, we are not excommunicated, the bishops, the priests, the faithful, they're not excommunicated. None of this is true. And then, of course, we have those that come back and say, well, yes, but the Society of St. Pius X is uh, is an imperfect communion. Uh, but when we consider this uh, imperfect communion of Pope Benedict the 16th, in light of the um, granting of faculties uh, for confessions and a path to faculties um, for marriages, uh, that doesn't hold much water when we think about the implications of these of these uh, grants that have been given to us. Okay. So what we want to consider in this uh, episode, and what needs to be considered, is that fundamental duty of each Catholic to fulfill uh, attendance at Mass, and the Mass of all time, of course. And when we speak about the uh, fulfillment of this obligation, um, for Catholics in this day and age, uh, it poses a a bit of a difficulty for them. And so out of necessity, um, in the spirit of the Church, with with a charity, with great charity for the Church, um, we provide that mass for, for souls today. So the answer is yes. The answer is yes. That's the bottom line, uh, with very good reasons, uh, based upon, uh, divine and ecclesiastical laws. You can attend the masses of the society of St. Pius X. Okay. So we'll start by, like you said, by looking at the, this commandment of, of the church, this commandment of God, uh, that we need to keep the Lord's day holy. Uh, and this is something that, we're not allowed to change, um, and that every every person is obliged to do. Uh, so, can we mm-hmm. dive into that a little bit, Father? Yes, absolutely. It's um, 
and fundamentally based upon a, a law of God. Anyone can change a law of God. We have the third commandments of the Decalogue, the third commandments that remember uh, to keep holy the Lord's day. And that third commandment is based upon the obligations of the first commandment. Uh, this is a question now of, of natural law, uh, where we are obliged to worship God in the first place. Every man knows this without revelation. Um, but then we have, uh, of course, the divine positive law, a very well-established, clear law of God in the Decalogue, that there's a day set aside uh, for this obligation to be uh, fulfilled. Again, this comes from God. It, it can't be changed. Um, and in the whole, in the history of revealed religion, um, we see this fulfilled, all right? Um, even outside of revealed religion, you know, that basic law of worship is is also seen as well. Uh, but in the Old Testament, um, you have the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath when <clears throat> there's pretty much a complete cessation of just about everything. Um, no manna collecting, <laughs> no cooking, um, all that had to be done be the day before. Uh, no collecting of firewood, no fire making. In fact, there's a instance in the book of Numbers where a man is put to death for collecting firewood. Um, in general, breaking the Sabbath was punishable by death. So you see how, how solemn this was, how important this was. Sure. Um, but there was sacrifice. Um, and there was religious activity and those activities um, which led to or um, – uh, permitted the sacrifice were allowed. In fact, sacrifice was doubled on on the Sabbath. Um, you know, two lambs were offered up in the morning instead of one. <clears throat> so this was very, very important. And um, um, God tells Israel through Moses, of course, that this keeping of the Sabbath is a perpetual sign between him and Israel and in an everlasting covenant. And here we are in the, in the New Testament, uh, spiritual children of Israel, in a sense. And uh, that perpetual sign that uh, that covenant uh, with God uh, endures. Okay. Of course, in the New Testament, uh, the obligation continues uh, with the new and eternal sacrifice of, of our Lord, the one sacrifice replacing all the uh, sacrifices of the temple uh, that had come before. So uh, we have this um, this fundamental law. This is this divine law, and the uh, of course the the day of observance, the the Sabbath, is uh, for us uh, in the New Testament the the Sunday uh, changed by the apostles, and the uh, normative way, the established way of uh, sanctifying that is going to mass, uh, going to mass. It makes complete sense. Nothing can rival, nothing can replace uh, the mass. Of course, there are going to be times of necessity uh, for faithful, um, whether it be you know true necessity that keeps them away, whether it be um, their duty of state um, or acts of charity, all right, th these uh, may exempt, um, but the, the law remains. And if you can go to Mass, you go to Mass, right? Um, so you've got the, the divine law, and of course, uh, based upon that is the church law, the ecclesiastical law, um, and there's a precept of the church that we have to go to Mass. Right? Um, the church has that power to uh, enact such disciplines for the good of souls. And this was the practice, you know, the immemorial practice uh, in, in, in the church. Uh, um, the practice, the, the moral obligation was there from the beginning, even though, like many laws of the church, um, it was, you know, legislated um, and affirmed up uh, later on in the history of the church. Okay. Um, and of course, church law today, um, canon law still says that a person who assists at mass celebrated anywhere in a Catholic rite on the feast day itself um, or in the evening, says the new code of the preceding day satisfies the obligation of participating in the mass. 
Um, we'll have to go off on a little tangent here uh, when we talk about this this question of the vigil mass, um, because it is something that uh, we certainly don't do in the Society of St. Pius X, um, and certainly not something that we encourage because it's not in line with the tradition of of the church. Um, so we we don't want to you know establish something new. It is a novelty. Um, for whatever reasons, in the 1960s, uh, these vigil masses came about. Um, um, it's pretty clear in the divine positive law that Sunday's the day right. that we have to glorify God and um, and through the mass. So. Okay. So, so that's what the church says. That's what God himself says about what we are supposed to do in terms of keeping the Lord's Day holy, keeping the new Sabbath, the Sunday holy. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes sense. That's pretty clear. Uh, let's move on then, Father, to the question of the traditional mass. Um, obviously, that that fulfills your obligation. Um, mm -hmm. And we've talked in the past about the, the Noah's Ordo mass. Uh, on these episodes, we've talked about how it's a deficient rite. We've talked about how it's a danger uh, to the faith mm -hmm. uh, to attend. Um, but before we start getting into can I go to an SSPX mass, Maybe we look at, can I go to a traditional mass? Does a traditional mass fulfill our, our obligation? The answer is yes, but let's dive into that a little bit, Father. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you've, you've covered from what I've seen quite a bit of that uh, territory when it comes to the critique of the, of the new mass. Um, certainly the priests um, and also the faithful have a right to the traditional mass. Um, and You've probably talked about the the papal bull of Pope Pius, uh, Pope Saint Pius V, uh, quote primum, uh, which um, spells that out quite clearly, um, and supports the argument here. Um, Pope Saint Pius V, um, of course, did not promulgate a new missal, uh, but codified the immemorial Roman rites and extended its use throughout the Latin Church. And, and at the same time, authorized priests to use it in perpetuity. Um, and so one could come back with the arguments and say, well, you know, that's what one pope says. And then, you know, another pope later on says uh, that priests cannot. Uh, you say, I can. I, <laughs> I say you cannot. But then you have to remember that it's just it's not just a law of a pope. Right. In fact, the traditional mass. Uh, um, oftentimes called the Tridentine Mass or the Tridentine Rite, um, is an effect of the Council of, of Trent. So it's not just the person of the Pope. Um, and beyond that, um, it's not just a, uh, again, another positive law that can be abrogated later on. There's the whole law of custom. You know, this, this was codifying what was in custom. For, for centuries, for, for many centuries. You know, the Trinity Mass is based upon um, the Gregorian Sacramentary, for example, which is many centuries old at that point. Um, and hence, uh, it's also uh, good to call it the Mass of all time, mm -hmm. uh, which one cannot come along and just dismiss at, at, at will. Right. Um, so, yeah, so the traditional mass cannot be forbidden, um, you know, based upon that, that reasoning. Um, then, of course, uh, you know, the, the church is not interested in making um, it difficult for priests to say this mass and for the faithful to attend this mass. Um, on the contrary, the highest law of the church uh, governing other laws of the church is the salvation of souls to make available to them the means uh, for their their sanctification and so um i think we've established well how um you know f faithful the priest have a duty to uh, glorify god um, according to divine ecclesiastical law if we have a duty um, we also have a right Duties okay. um, uh, beget, we could say, rights. Uh, um, for example, if you give to one of your children um, the duty to clean the kitchen floor, um, which I'm sure you do, <laughs> uh, and you say, well, uh, you can't use a broom 
or you can't use a mop or you can't use a rag. Uh, here, here's a rake. You can use a rake. <laughs> uh, the, the, the kitchen floor, that, that would be a bit unjust. Right. Um, and so a, um, a duty uh, begets a right and a right to the proper means to fulfill that duty. Right. And so also with the mass. Right. So if you have the, the duty to glorify God in the best way possible, you have the right uh, to the mass that accomplishes exactly that. And and that's not just my reasonings. That's the spirit of the church. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the canon law um, of the church gives rights to the faithful. Um, so in the new code of canon law, the Christian faithful, and I read the, the canon here, have the right to receive assistance from the sacred pastors out of the spiritual goods of the church, especially the word of God and the sacraments. So um, if we want, if, if the faithful wants uh, sanctifying uh, rites uh, of the sacraments um, and, of course, preeminently the mass, uh, they'll go to the traditional mass and they have a right to the traditional mass. Okay. Um, so Catholics have the right to attend the traditional mass in order to fulfill their Sunday obligation. Got it? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yep. What about you, Father? What about an SSPX priest? Uh, you are outside of the church. I'm being facetious here. Uh, you are in an irregular position. Uh, faithful should not go to you for their Sunday obligation because, well, all that. You're you're not under the authority of the Pope and under Rome, and you are just this renegade out there society. Right? Right. Well, uh, <laughs> wrong. Um, <laughs> So, um, I mean, this, the Society of St. Pius X priests are Catholic, and that's not just me as a society priest um, I'm, I'm blowing my own trumpet. Um, I, we have been recognized as Catholic um, by prelates of the church as well. Um, you, you've gone in op- other episodes into the whole question of, um, um, you know, whether we're censored or not, um, you know, whether we're uh, suspended or excommunicated or, or all that. So uh, we don't necessarily have to uh, answer that question directly here. Uh, we can just refer people to uh, those those episodes. But what may be interesting is to see certain testimonies of um, uh, prelates of the church. I think, for uh, example, and this is rather recent, at the beginning of October, Cardinal Ladaria, uh, who is the prefect of the Congregation of Faith of the Faith, is quoted in an interview which he gave to a Spanish magazine, um, where he essentially says that we're Catholic. Um, so um, the direct question and then response here, and I have to admit I had to plug this into um, uh, Google Translate because the translation official translation doesn't exist. Um, but the question was, how is the dialogue with the, uh, well, Google Translate says Lefebrians, um, some say Lefebris, Society of St. Pius X. Uh, the answer from the Cardinal, it is something that depends on our Lord, and we must ask that he open the way for us to reach fuller unity, because it is not that they are separated from the Catholic Church, but the union is not perfect at this moment. So there's... Um, he's essentially saying that, that we are Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then over the years, there were um, concerned faithful that would write to the Ecclesia Dei Commission at that time. Um, and Monsignor Pearl, um, at that time, fielded uh, some of these uh, um, questions, and there was there's public correspondence at this point. Um, and so we have... Uh, For example, from a letter, which was a letter of clarification that he gave uh, to previous correspondents um, in 2002, um, he responds to the direct question, can I fulfill my Sunday obligation by attending a Pius X Mass? And his response, in the strict sense, you may fulfill your Sunday obligation by attending a Mass celebrated by a priest of the Society of St. Pius X. Uh, and then um, a question that many probably do have, you know, the, the morality of such attendance. 
Um, uh, is it a sin for me to attend a pious tenth mass? And he responds uh, that if your primary reason uh, for attending the mass is to manifest a separation of communion, uh, to separate yourself from communion with the Roman pontiff and those in communion with him, it would be a sin. And of course, you know, on the, on the side here, we, we don't want anyone to have a schismatic, schismatic mentality, right. um, whether it be our, our own priest or the faithful that, that attend us, uh, our masses. But he says, if your intention is simply to participate in a mass according to the 1962 Missal for the sake of devotion, this would not be a sin. And then there was an interesting third question. Is it a sin for me to contribute to the Sunday collection at a Pius X Mass? And he responded, it would seem that a modest contribution to the collection at Mass could be justified. So there you there have you it. <laughs> and then in more recent years, uh, you have Archbishop Sh uh, Schneider of Kazakhstan, um, who was in 2015 an official visitor or visitator, um, as they say, to um, a couple of our seminaries and, and houses. And um, he was very impressed in his, um, in his visit. Um, he said that, you know, you know in, in that time, he had been uh, reading more of Archbishop Lefebvre and uh, said that we, we had to take more seriously the uh, concerns and uh, objections that Archbishop Lefebvre had um, with Vatican II and the and the new mass. So, um, so, so we have Cardinal Ladria, uh, Ladaria. Sorry, we have Monsignor Pearl. We have Archbishop Schneider. Uh, these are three prelates in official positions of the Church Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, uh, Ecclesia Dei, and then an official visitor. Um, there are there are many other you know priests. There are many other people who have said yes, this is fine. Uh, we're not getting into that because we're just looking at official statements from official prelates in an official capacity, all three of whom say, yes, broadly, yes, you can go to uh, an SSPX mass. Right, right, yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, I, I guess that's kind of, that's kind of all there is to say, Father. Uh, I, one could say, well, you know, you SSPX priests are, have this imperfect, um, relationship with the Holy See. Um, but again, we've, we've looked at that in, in other podcasts. Does the Vatican do, do church prelates, do they officially recognize priests of the Society of St. Pius X as Catholic? I mean, I guess the answer is yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty clear. Uh, we're recognized as Catholics. Um, I mean, our, our nation has never been um, taken to task. It's valid um, in, in their eyes. That's never been questioned. Um, it's, it's other, other things besides, but I, th I think we've established the groundwork, um, to show how it is according to the spirit of God and the spirit of the church, um, that one can go to our, our masses. Uh, well, we can't speak of an obligation to go to the, the Norma Sordo Mise, you know, attending mass is not just a question of checking off a box. Right. Um, and certainly, you know, in light of, uh, such research as um, maybe the Ottaviani intervention, uh, which was um, a study whose team of uh, theological researchers was headed by Archbishop of Fem himself. Um, you know, it, it talks about the Norvis Ordo, um, both as a whole and in its details, a striking departure from the Catholic theology of the Mass as it was formulated in Session 22 of the Council of Trent. Um, so we can't speak of a, uh, a, an obligation to go to that. So right. there is an obligation to go to the, to the traditional mass, um, and the church allows uh, for faithful to come to us. Yeah. Right. And again, the, I mean, the, the last, the last bit of the code of canon law is, as we've seen in a couple other podcasts seems to, seems to come into play here, father, I'm, I'm going a bit off script from what we were planning on talking about, yeah. but. Uh, that last that last provision in the code of canon law, the highest law, and I'm paraphrasing, the highest law is the salvation of souls. And God wants us to attend mass to fulfill our Sunday obligation. The best way to do that is the traditional mass. Therefore, go to the traditional mass. 
<laughs> regardless of anything else. And if you still think that society priests are, you know, censored and, and all that and all that, the can law uh, further gives provision for a just reason. I think we have more than a just reason to go to a, a censored priest um, to fulfill, again, a, a duty that faith will have before right. God. Right. Absolutely. So. Well, Father, unless there's anything else, I, I think uh, this is probably one of our shorter podcasts, but it's, uh, it's a fairly simple question and answer. Um, mm-hmm. And thank you for taking the time to go through it with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All, All the right. best. All right. Talk to you Have soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to and watching episode 47 of our Crisis in the Church series here on the SSPX podcast. We are just about finished with this entire series. Just a couple episodes left. We will have a bit of a recap episode coming next before finally we get the final word on the crisis in the church from the SSPX perspective from the Superior General of the Society of St. Pius X, Don Davide Pagliarani. That'll be coming up in the next few weeks. Please consider subscribing to the podcast and to the SSPX News English YouTube channel so that you won't miss these episodes or any future ones. And if you have the ability to set up a monthly recurring donation of 5 or 10 or $20 on sspxpodcast.com, it would help us immensely as we embark on several new series that will be starting in 2022. Until next week, thank you for listening and God bless you.